Shalom alaikum. Welcome everybody to the very first episode of Truth for Youth, where Syrian youth come together to talk about our faith, um, to share what we know with one another, and to learn from one another. Um, my name is Isabella Epperson. I'm 18 years old, and I'm a freshman in college. Hi, my name is Nina. I'm 23, and I'm a Syrian content creator. Hi, I'm Angelica. I'm 19 years old, and I'm a junior in college. Hi, my name is Caden. I'm 14 years old, and I'm a freshman in high school. All right, so it's so good to be here with you guys um, for our very first episode. Um, and I want to start by talking a little bit about what this show is and why we started it. So I actually started a YouTube channel recently called The Bottom of the Glass, where I just talk about my faith, and I post um, some of the Bible studies that I do at St. Mary's Church in Tarzana, which is where we are. So thank you to Abhikasha George for letting us use the room at the church to film. Um, and so me and Angie, we both actually um, are Bible study teachers, and I wanted a way to um, have my Bible studies recorded. Um, and so that kind of turned into brainstorming um, ideas, and this the idea for this show came up um, as a way to gather youth together and talk about the problems that youth are facing in today's world, um, and especially youth are targeted. I feel like the youth of today are really in spiritual warfare, and so we need to equip ourselves um, with the Word of God. And so before we begin our show, uh, I want to invite one more special guest, one more person to join us, and that is the Holy Spirit. So we're going to say a quick prayer. Everyone can just bow our heads and we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, we pray that you are with all of us today as we gather to talk, to spread your word. I pray that um, you grant your peace upon us, and I pray that all of the words that come out of our mouth are from the Holy Spirit, and that not one of the words that comes out of our mouth was not filtered through Jesus Christ's mind first. All right, so let's get into our first topic. Um, so this topic we wanted to talk about today is how to combat atheism and skeptical questions that we face about our faith. So I know um, three of us are students. Uh, in the school setting, I feel like what you're taught in school, especially in the field of science, me and Angie and Caden too, we all wanna go into the field of science. Um, and sometimes it feels like that field contradicts our faith, or what's being pushed is that they can't work together. Um, and so, what have you guys faced in terms of how atheists come up to you to ask you questions, whether it's positive or whether it's negative? Um, what are some of the experiences that you guys have had? Uh, personally, I post a lot about Christ on social media because I'm not ashamed of my faith. I was always taught to express it because I'm very proud of my faith. And I love your post. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, but I've actually gotten from a lot of my classmates, because I've gone to public school my whole life, which is not faith-based, it's a um, secular curriculum, and I've actually had a lot of people message me like, oh, um, these Christian posts you post are very encouraging, and it made me realize, I thought back for a second, I was like, this secular world is very, like a Debbie Downer on people, mm -hmm. and I guess my, like, posting Christian stuff, posting Bible verses encourages people. I haven't gotten any hate so far, um, but I have gotten people letting me know that it's encouraging. They haven't given their life to Christ yet, but it makes me so happy to know that at least uh, God is planting the little mustard seed in their heart for faith. And the fact that it is a positive light for them, maybe it'll encourage them to eventually come to Christ one day, which makes me happy. That's all I can pray for. Yeah. I mean, you're sharing something positive, and they want to. They see that they want to know where it's coming from. Exactly. And it's great that you're showing it's coming from God, from Christ. Amen. Does anyone else want to share? Uh, I've shared my faith with my friends before by just telling them either Bible verses or that God loves them or things like that. And almost all of my atheist friends have been open to listen or, or at least hear out what I've had to say. And a lot of them take it very nicely. It's Again, like she said, it's really good compared to the uh, secular world we live in because a lot of it is so negative in the secular world compared to the goodness and grace of God. And it's such a stark contrast for them. And uh, almost all of them have been very open to it. They haven't given their lives to Christ yet, but 
No, hopefully we'll convince them. Yeah, I mean, what I have to say is, um, so I kind of speak to strangers a lot, making these videos, just going around. I don't know who I'm going to come up against. So sometimes I, I come across an atheist, and um, the topic just comes up about religion. And I notice that lots of times they're open to just listening, um, seeing what we have to say. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure deep down inside some of their minds, they just, they're thinking about, you know, they, they have this like emptiness. I feel like they, they want to find out what, why that is or what it is. So many atheists kind of explore different things. They, they like to hear different things. So, um, and you can even hear what they have to say in the counter and just ask dumb questions to get them thinking. Just pick their brain. I think that really helps. But yeah, I mean, even, <clears throat> I even have some friends who um, aren't really sure they're like open or atheist. And I think it's your duty as a friend to kind of at least try to, you know, yeah, at least try to bring them closer to God. Um, like Andrew said, plant that seed. Yeah, just plant the seed slowly but surely. And sometimes, unfortunately, it doesn't work. But at that point, I say you just got to pray for them and just hope that they, that Jesus comes into their heart. And, and yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think, um, so it sounds like you guys have had pretty positive experiences, which is amazing. Um, I, I have like I've seen instances too. It's it's worse on social media where it feels like people who don't have God they're angry at the world. So they they come at you angry. I've had people come up to me and they ask me questions about the faith and they're charged because they're doubting. But I feel like as soon as you start to like explain to them like with positivity and like with you know I want to help you learn, it kind of like melts away, right? Have you guys noticed that? Yes. It's like a it's like a beautiful thing to kind of watch people let their guard down and listen. And I think when they do listen, they start to realize the beauty of faith. Mm -hmm. Not just as, you know, tradition, I go to church every Sunday, but like, this is how I live my life, and I, I live it with mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing I would kind of wanted to get you guys' thoughts on, um, especially with people like you guys who want to go into scientific fields, the question I would ask you is, do you feel like your faith fits into your field? <laughs> um, I'm actually very passionate about this topic. I actually did a Bible study, I think it was a few weeks back, about um, the miracles of the human body and just human anatomy and how it relates to Christianity. Because actually we can look at a lot of biblical and scientific facts that science does prove God's existence. Absolutely. For example, um, we were talking about this actually outside. They found blood on nails, I believe, um, which were believed the nails that Christ was crucified with, and the DNA had only 23 chromosomes. Now, a human being, like let's say Caden, has 46 chromosomes, 23 from his mother, 23 from his father. This um, DNA only had half that amount, because it would only be scientifically possible if that person had one earthly parent, which Jesus Christ had Mary, his mother, only earthly parent, which was his mother. So. That's one of many, many facts that proves Christ's existence, first of all. And there's many other facts, like Sodom and Gomorrah, when um, God sent fire from the sky. There's still sulfur clusters in, on the ground there now. And um, uh, Lot's wife, who turned to salt her, herself as salt, is still there. It's crumbled, and obviously this has been thousands of years, but there's so many scientific and archaeological facts that prove Christ. And just the humans themselves are here. Like the miracle of life, like growing a child in your womb. That, to me, that's amazing because we learn in school it's just a cluster of cells that become a human being. But we also know that in um, the book of Psalms, it talks about Christ knit us in our mother's womb. So we know it's not just science, it's also Christ, you know, doing the work right. behind the scenes. Yeah. But there's, I feel like it does tie in, especially uh, you and I want to go into medicine, and medicine has been a practice for many ages. and just the miracle of medicine itself, but also, I don't know, Katie, if you want to speak on engineering specifically or more mathematical STEM careers and how that can relate maybe to Christ. Sure. Um, it's less related compared to biology, but in engineering, you can see a lot of examples of how God has given these people wisdom and other things to prom either promote the faith or provide more evidence for the faith. But unfortunately, a lot of people take that wisdom and say, oh, we're smarter than God now, but a lot of it is actually, if you go deep into it and compare it to the Bible, you can see the com uh, comparisons to the Bible and the parallels. And especially, I love space exploration, 
And you can see just how God's grace and God's um, like goodness formed all of the stars, all of the galaxies, all that. And there's so many laws that just either don't make sense to me or are like a whole other level of depth and thought that I, I re refuse to believe that anything natural could have done that. Uh, there has to be a creator. Absolutely. I, there's so much to unpack here. So I want to start, Angie, you talked about the blood of Christ. There's so much with the blood of Christ, right? Like we were talking about, um, like before we started filming, um, even down to the blood type. So Jesus Christ was type AB, that's the blood they found on the cross. And AB blood type is known as the universal receiver. Right? Universally, we receive Jesus Christ. Um, there's so much there. Um, and that's science. And I always like to say, like, if you break down, like, the definition of science that you learn in school is observation of the natural world. God created the natural world. So technically, science is just the observation of what God created, right? Yeah. And I think it's really beautiful. And also another thing with, like, the creation story, I feel like that's like the biggest, like the hardest part for atheists to grasp is like how, you know, you say God created the world in seven days, like that doesn't make sense, like billions of years, whatever, um, you know, it was the Big Bang Theory, not God. That's what I like hear a lot, is like it wasn't God, it was science to the Big Bang Theory. Well, I always ask people, do you know who theorized the Big Bang Theory? And I've told you guys this, Caden, he knows. It's a Catholic priest. A Catholic priest. A Catholic priest came up with this theory that now atheists they think they can use it. They think it's being used um, to disprove God, but in reality, it proves God further. I know you're going into a field where you're gonna you know a lot about this. I'm sure you know more about this than me already. But if you look at the creation of the universe, um, and I actually took two books. I took the Bible and I took a book um, called Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's an atheist, and I compared it side by side with the Bible um, to see the creation story. And if you read it, I'm telling you, it follows word for word. Um, like, what's the first thing God said? He said, let there be light, right? When the Big Bang happened, um, you know, the strong nuclear forces were formed, um, particles began to form, and those particles, the main ones, were photons, and photons are light. Light was made first with the Big Bang. God created light. Yeah, so like there's so much to unpack here. So Angie, you're talking about the blood of Christ and there's so much there with the blood of Christ, even down to the blood type. So he was AB blood type. Um, and if you don't know, AB is known as the universal receiver. Well, who do we receive universally? We receive Christ. Um, and that's science, that's biology. Mm -hmm. And then even your field, like you know, your astro engineering, all of that stuff, um, and physics. There's so much there, and especially one thing I always like to tell people um, is the creation story. A lot of people use that against us as Christians. They're like, it doesn't make sense that you claim your God made the world in seven days. Like we know, according to science, it was made in billions of years, um, and you know, the Big Bang theory tells us this and this and this. And so I always ask people, well, who theorized the Big Bang theory? A Catholic priest. Father George Le Mechpe, he was a Belgian physicist, but he was also a Catholic priest. And so that's kind of where like your field and your faith tie in. And so I started like getting curious about this. I was like, well, what prompted him to, to do this? I mean, I've always heard it used as an argument against our religion, against our faith. So I took two books and I compared them side by side. One of them was the Bible, and the other book was Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by Neil deGrasse Tyson. If you don't know who he is, um, he's an astrophysicist, but he's also an atheist. And so you start comparing this book written by an atheist about science and this book, the Bible, you know, the holy book, and you start seeing that what he's saying about the Big Bang follows the chronological order of Genesis. So everything started from a singular point, um, everything around it was a void. If you read Genesis, it says the earth was formed from void, from nothingness. Boom, the bang happens. What if the bang was God's voice? You know? speaking loudly, it's like a big bang. And then, you know, things start to form, the strong weak nuclear force form. The, you know, the bosons and the photons start to form, and photons are some of the first particles that were formed. And what are photons? Light. Light. Photons are the particles that are light. Um, and what did God say first? Let there be light. 
Uh, and there's so much more, even down to like the book starts talking about how the atmosphere is formed, and then it happens at the same time that God says, you know, He created sort of a veil between the sky and the water. That's like in the earth. That's the atmosphere. Um, and so you start comparing these things side by side, and you realize that these scientific findings and these theories are just sort of another way to put what God did. And you know, we, we take the word of God, and, and Angie, we were having a conversation about this, about how Jesus used parables as lessons. Yes. He spoke in parables. They weren't necessarily like factual, true stories, but they gave the message. And so like people years and years ago, they didn't know what, you know, photons and bosons yeah. are, the big bang. they didn't know that stuff. So God was, you know, God is and wasn't always as smart. And so he put it in terms that they would be able to comprehend. He said, I'm going to simplify it for you. Instead of saying this took millions of years, you know, God's time is different than ours. He said it took seven days. Instead of saying, you know, I created the photons, he said, I said, let there be light. And so he puts it into a way that we can understand. Um, and the more you, like, look into it, the more you start to see God in the aspects of science and in our natural world. It's a very fascinating topic. You brought up that which reminded me a lot of atheists like to pinpoint the topic of evolution mm -hmm. and how like we came from primates or they're our ancestors. But if we look in Genesis, it's not that we're ancestors, God created us all. Well, us humans specifically were created in his image, human beings, mm -hmm. but people like to point out, oh, then why do primates and like humans or mammals have all these like similar, I guess, anatomy? We, most mammals have a back, like a vertebrae. Yeah. So, and a lot of, like you said, atheists, or atheists like to talk about evolution, like this is what we came from. But it's evidence, and it even talks about in Genesis, we're, we may have similar attributes because God created us all. We all have one creator. Mm. And it's not that we come from animals, it's that God created us all, and he, like you said, God is always smart, and he <laughs> gave us the anatomy we need to function, our body mm -hmm. does... Like the, we have different divisions of our nervous system to do different things for us, to make our heart beat, um, uh, fight or flight response. So when they like to argue evolution or this or that, it's like it all comes down to the Bible and Christ and how he made us all. Absolutely. Because everything boils down to the Bible. Like no matter, you can read and read and read and you'll find something new every time you open this book. And it all goes back that science proves God. And it's not just these examples we're giving. There's so many others that we can't even so think of many. right now. There's so many yeah. studies that haven't been done. That we haven't found yet. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to point that out because <laughs> you reminded me. That was great, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else like to add on to that? Uh, Kaylee? Okay. Uh, she was talking about earlier about how the, or I guess I was talking about how the universe has traits that uh, could not be created could not be created uh, naturally. And one of the coolest ones, in my opinion, is in our own solar system, is how Jupiter is big enough, and it creates a strong enough gravitational pull to pull away asteroids from this planet, literally protecting us. If that wasn't there, we would have been obliterated by asteroids God knows how long ago. So, stuff like that, or like, for example, how the speed of light is the theoretical speed limit, because if anything went faster, it would break the laws of physics. Stuff like that, could not have, or I mean, you could try and explain it with science, but the most logical and reasonable explanation is the simplest one. We have a creator who, God, the, yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating, I didn't know that. It's like everything was designed with purpose. Yeah, um, <coughs> sorry. Yeah, so there's this movie, it's called um, Case of the Christ, The mm -hmm. Case of Christ, something like that, where um, it's about an atheist who was kind of upset that his wife became Christian, and he worked as a news reporter, so he thought the best way to kind of um, try to prove that Christ isn't real is to kind of go out and do all these studies and try to disprove his, his existence. And um, after months and months of talking to the experts and um, going around trying to figure it out, he, he eventually found out how real Jesus was and, and him himself became a Christian. So and it's based on a true story as well. So that movie is just a great visual uh, for some people who, who prefer visuals just to kind of um, get an idea of how, I guess, how you can uh, kind of explore it and just find God in the right way. I love stories. Yeah. What was the name of the movie? I believe the case
face of Christ? Face yeah. I'll have to look that up. But yeah, it's it's real, guys. And the more that you look into it, the more you start to see it everywhere. Um, and like, if you if you start looking, I'm gonna share with you guys my favorite quote, and this is actually um, why I named my YouTube channel the bottom of the glass is because this quote um, was by Werner Heisenberg, very famous physicist, and he was religious. And you start to see throughout history um, all of these people that you would assume like were like atheists because they made such big contributions to science actually were religious. Newton, Isaac Newton, mm -hmm. very religious. Um, and so I'm gonna find this quote for you. This is my favorite quote of all time. Um, and it says, the first sip from the glass of natural sciences will turn you into an atheist. But at the bottom of the glass, God is waiting for you. And what that means to me is when you're looking at like science or whatever it is, when you're looking at it surface level, it seems like it, it doesn't align with the Bible. But when you start to dig deeper, you, you reach the bottom of the glass and you put things into context, not just put the science into context, but put the Bible into context. You have to read both to realize it. Then you find God. So that's my favorite quote. Um, and yeah, like Caden said, and like Angie said, there's like there's infinite instances like this that we haven't found yet, and that we might not find until maybe when you go to heaven, God will reveal you know all of this to you. <laughs> you know, but um, I don't know. We still don't know. Um, you know, one thing I found recently that was really interesting. Uh, is the elements of our body, do you guys know, they're like 86% the same ele elements that are in stardust. So like the, the carbon, zinc, the oxygen, all of these elements they say were formed from the stardust that was happened at the Big Bang, right? And so then I, I've heard that fact before, but then I heard it again recently and it, something clicked in my head and I was like, oh my gosh, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Yes, that's what, that's what I thought. Yes, yes, and I was like, whoa, that is so real, you know? Like, they're not, the Bible is saying this stuff for the spiritual meaning and the metaphorical meaning that, you know, your life on earth doesn't mean everything, like, you will eventually leave your body, and, you know, live in heaven, hopefully. <laughs> but um, it's literal, too. Like, it's literally saying, like, you are made of the same elements that were formed from stardust mm -hmm. at the beginning. That's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> You guys, it's so real, and it's it's so like when you get into it, it's like you go down a rabbit hole, and it's like addictive. Like you keep finding this stuff, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. All right. Does anyone else have anything to add? Angie, yeah. is yay. <laughs> so you were saying how we go down a rabbit hole, and I kind of feel like God. Obviously, He created us, and science proves that. But I feel like He also did it on purpose in a way, like we're in awe of him and like you said we might not know everything and that's because if we knew everything we would be at god's level if we knew how he created everything so i love the beauty that we can be in awe of him and the fact that like let's say some more science-based careers and aspirations mm -hmm. that we have although like you said like um warner heisenberg says like from a surface level it may seem like this is all disproving christ but once you dig deeper, you're you just you're opened up a whole new world of exploring how real Christ is and how real this book and what it has to offer is and God's story from before He came on Earth to when He came to Earth as Christ. It's like it leaves you in awe. And I love the beauty of that. Like even uh, physicists and people in like high degrees of science and Isaac Newton, literally one of the most famous people. And, yeah, exactly. And he was a Christian man. So it's just crazy how these fields that the secular world likes to determine as like atheist or secular are actually very proving and in the case of Christ. So I just think it's really cool. That's what I wanted to add. <laughs> Thank you for adding that. Um, yeah, like you said, it's, it's a mystery. We have the yeah. of faith. And that's like, that's what's really cool about the Christian faith is that if you are like, science minded like some people it's there for you if you're not it's there for you god tells us like it's there's mysteries that you don't have to think about it because god has it covered like you know he, he yeah. tells you um these things in the bible how to live your life what you need but if you seek more it is there and and god and again i, I want to be clear with this don't try to prove god don't like um 
you know, base, base your faith on whether or not you can prove it or not. But this stuff is there. And um, like it says in the Bible, this stuff can be used for teaching. Mm. So this circles back to the topic of our discussion, um, atheism and how we face it as youth today, as Christian youth. Um, living in a pretty secular world, I would say, um, that it, it's there for the teaching and it's there to use, to share. And I think that you guys have done a great job with this topic, sharing. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe someone will watch it and they'll gain a perspective they didn't have before. But thank you so much for watching this episode of Truth For Youth. Um, it was awesome talking with you guys. Uh, once again, thank you to St. Mary's Church in Tarzana. Um, and Father George for allowing us to use this room, um, for supporting us in this, and also for teaching us a lot about um, what we know, because he is our, our priest and we, <laughs> we learn from him constantly. So thank you so much for watching. Um, God be with you, and have a wonderful day.